Hello everyone. Today we are honoring All Saints Sunday when we remember all of our loved ones who have died as well as the saints and the martyrs throughout Christian history. Um, while this may be a sad day for many, um, it may also be a hopeful day. Jesus promised his love and new life to be given to all who believe in him. Uh, just a heads up for those of you who join me from week to week, I'll be traveling next week to see family and friends, and I'm leaving my laptop behind. Yay! <laughs> so in today's email, there is also going to be a link for next Sunday's message. I'm officially on vacation from this coming Tuesday, that's November 5th, um, to Tuesday, November 12th, and I'll be back for office hours at St. Paul on the 13th of November. Okay? Got it memorized? Ah! I don't expect you to, but I do wish you a very blessed week um, filled with Jesus' love and comfort and, yes, especially joy. Take care, everyone. Through the raising of Lazarus, Jesus offers a, the world a vision of the life to come when death and weeping will be no more. Holy Gospel is according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? And then Jesus, again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there's a stench because he's been dead four days. And Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Here we all are again on All Saints Day. I like to think of this day as when we are connected with each other more closely. You know, when one person in our church family experiences grief, we all do. As well as that, um, at the same time, we are also connected to churches all over the world in their holding the same day of commemoration. We are joined by the experience of grief, for sure. Um, we've all been there at some point. But we're also connected through hope, the hope of eternal life that we are all promised through Jesus Christ. We're also connected through the past. All Saints Day is when we lift up the heroes of the Bible, for example, um, the saints from long ago, people like St. Paul and St. Peter. We also commemorate Christians um, who were martyred because of their faith. One example would be Dietrich Bonhoeffer during World War II. And we also honor the saints who helped spread the gospel, such as St. Patrick in Ireland, or Mother Teresa, who changed the lives of the poor and the hopeless through Christ. And lastly, and maybe most notably, we remember those saints who loomed large in our own lives, the spouses, 
the parents and grandparents, those in our families who may have died as infants or at a younger age, our friends and loved ones of all kinds. So many people from the past or recent present, all wrapped in Jesus' arms and our arms in remembrance. So of course it is a bittersweet day. And hopefully through this day of remembering, we are all brought closer together through hope and comfort. We're all brought together more closely as congregations, as families, and through Christ. You know, when you think about it, um, we really do commemorate Jesus as a saint all year long, especially in his role as Christ, the one who saved us. In fact, most of us, many of us, we need the power of Christ all year long just to get through some of those tougher valleys of life, especially if you are the one today who is grieving a recent death of a friend, a family member, a spouse, or a coworker. Some of you know already that grieving itself is a process. It has its ups and its downs. Depending on the closeness of the relationship that you've lost, it doesn't just end in a few months or even a few years, and it may linger in your heart forever. So this day is for you, to remind you that you are not alone and to bring you hope and comfort. You know, whatever our life circumstances, Jesus is available to us. He is available to assist us in transforming our grief toward a time of healing and perhaps even joy because he promises to help us and certainly to give us new life. So I would say that Christ is the ultimate saint, the one that as Christians we commemorate whenever two or more are gathered in his name all year long. Too bad we can't hit the reverse button and go back to an earlier time with our loved ones. That's what Jesus did for Mary and Martha and Lazarus. When he brought Lazarus back to life, he was reversing time by an entire four whole days. And in the process, he spit in the face of death. You know, this story includes that verse that uh, has been so often quoted that Jesus wept. I think that in this episode alone, it proves that he understood the pain of loss and the pain of those he loved. It's personal to him this time. You know, even when it's not personal, Jesus often heals in a, people in a way that is so tangible. I mean, he will often you, uh, heal a person using touch, like rubbing dirt into a person's eyes so that they can get their sight back. He often takes a hands-on approach, or sometimes in you listen to what his words are in other healings, you can actually hear the emotion in the words that he speaks as well. As the story goes, a man named Lazarus was sick. He was the brother of Mary and Martha. They lived in the village of Bethany, and by the way, they were friends of Jesus. So when these two sisters realized that Lazarus was near death now, of course, they sent word to Jesus. He was their doctor, so to speak, as well as their close friend. And they were clear about what they wanted. Please come, save our brother, your friend. And for some reason, they don't know why yet. Jesus and the disciples, they waited and waited. So imagine if you called an ambulance and you know they got that call and yet for four days no one comes. I mean, sounds crazy, right? The disciples and Jesus, in fact, stayed two more days where they were and then they had a two-day journey. There was an understanding at that time that the life force from a dead person's body 
stayed close by for an entire three days. Then there was no hope of life. So the four day time period wait was very important. It was absolutely impossible in anybody's mind that no way, no way could Lazarus ever be retrieved, revived, he even started to smell. And poor, poor Mary. I mean, you can hear her anger and pain directed at Jesus when he finally gets there. Lord, if you had just been here, my brother wouldn't have died. But Jesus challenges her belief. You got to have faith, Mary, that through God, all things are possible. She didn't know it. But that's why Jesus took his time getting there to do the impossible through the power of God for everybody to see, to witness. They needed to witness it. And in an instant, Jesus reverse, reverses the impact of four long days and Lazarus comes out. He's revived. He's come back to life. Now, he can't talk right at first. You know, he probably looked very alien and people were terrified when they saw him which is one of the reasons why I love that image of him coming out of the tomb, because it's so dramatic. I mean, this is a really big attention-grabbing episode in Jesus' ministry. If ever there was a movie moment, this is it. His face was still wrapped, even. Jesus makes the impossible possible through God's power. If anyone was laughing now, it was Martha and Mary when they were touching their brother and their faces were lighting up. If there were any tears after Lazarus came out of the cave, they were now tears of joy. Now here is the faith dilemma. I am yet to know someone who is clinically dead for a day, let alone four days that then came back to life like Lazarus did. Maybe someday, who knows? So sometimes it is those of us who are left behind who have the greatest task because things don't always turn out the way they did for Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Four days after the death of our loved ones becomes four years and sometimes even 40 years. So we might ask, okay then, what about our loved ones? Why didn't Jesus heal them from even at a distance? As survivors, it is understandable to be like Mary, even some of the time, and say, Lord, if you had just been here, my brother would not have died. We might know we might believe that our loved one has joined Jesus and the saints, all of those saints in heaven. But what about now? What about for those of us left behind? During those times when I have felt devastated and grieving, I have found the best comfort to be found in the Psalms that we call the laments, where people are talking back to God. And they're saying, where are you? You know, through the Psalms, people express their anger and pain to God for centuries. And God listened to them. And I think God still keeps on loving us and listening to us now, especially when we are the ones who are yelling. If memory serves, God has never hit anyone with a lightning bolt for speaking out in pain or prayer. God has big shoulders to cry on. I mean, just listen to this part of Psalm 88. Um, this is the one that we read every year on uh, Monday, Thursday. But I, O oh Lord, cry out to you, why do you cast me off? Why do you hide, my, why do you hide your face from me? Things haven't ended the way that I wanted them to end. And God hears us. This psalm and others reminds us that God is in the pit with us. Even when we might feel God's absence right now, be assured that God is there. Just as Jesus opened his heart 
and shared his tears with Mary and Martha during their time of distress. I think that it is during those most heart-wrenching times that as members of the body of Christ, that we can help. We can help each other. We can be present with others, and that's it. We can attend to people for whom grief is at its freshest. Because of Christ's resurrection, I give thanks, and I hope you do too, because we've been promised everlasting life. Because of Jesus in our life today, we never need to grieve alone. We have each other, we have our friends and our family members, and even if you don't have that, we have Christ who is here. He is real, he's personal with you and with me, just as he was with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. We can have hope and comfort always, no matter how devastating things are, because Christ is always healing us, sustaining us, and continuing to dry our tears. Amen.